couldn't stop. And before you knew it, it was all over. And then you panicked. And then... I would, I've never been angry, that angry at him. Not enough for that. I've been so far angrier at other people, at other ex-boyfriends. Then tell me who could have done this? <clears throat> who did this? I don't know, but if I am... If I go to trial for this, and if I'm convicted for this, whoever did this is going to be sitting very pretty somewhere. Glad that it wasn't them. And it's my job to make sure that an innocent person does not go to jail. But I don't see an innocent person sitting in front of me. When I asked you, I always, I always ask this one question. Well, actually, it's two. First one is, did you kill Travis? And you kind of hesitated a little bit and said, I, have, I didn't have anything to do with it. Then I asked you a similar question. Did you have anything to do with Travis's death? You hesitated again. Well, that's because I feel like if I had gone to Arizona like Most asked, people would say, no. Did you kill Travis? No. Well, I didn't, and I didn't have anything to do with it. Now, do I feel responsible? I've been carrying around guilt since I heard about it. Why do you feel responsible? If you felt responsible, it means you know something else. No, because it means I your think... actions led to his death. Because he always has guilted me. He's always guilted me. And the last so you time feel we somebody talked... else. You feel somebody else killed him. Well, yeah. For what reason? I don't know. I don't know then that. How do you feel guilty? Because if you don't know the reason. Here's why I feel guilty. The one of the last times we spoke, he was guilting me about not coming to see him, and. <laughs> Part of my heart still wanted to go see him, and another part just wants to move on and pursue this new avenue, mm -hmm. which was in Utah. And there is a tinge of guilt, you know, when he would text me and he would say, hey, you want to come over and make out or want to da da da. Um, I didn't respond one night, and I just stayed strong and I didn't respond, and then he called and called and called, and then the next day he was like, you don't care about me. You don't love me. You don't care. I was there all alone, and you didn't want to come and hang out. You didn't want to come and keep me company. And he says it not like that, but in that tone, but it's in the sweetest, sweetest way. And it's 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 guilt. Um, I still don't get the guilt. I really don't. You keep explaining it, but it has nothing to do with whether he, because he guilted was killed me. or not. He, How is you being there? Gonna prevent him from being killed. Well, I kind of feel that if I had gone, that we could have been out watching well, a movie, or we could have two people could have done something more than just him. I just feel like if 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 there was some way that I I could have prevented it, there's some way that I could have done something to stop it. And I told that to a few people, and they're like, "Well, you might have been killed too, maybe, but maybe Travis would still be alive." Travis has done a lot for me, and I wouldn't hurt him. He introduced the gospel to me. Well, I have proof that says otherwise, Joey. I, I can't... I can't deny that. I can't deny that proof. And that proof is not pointing at anybody else. Nobody. Nobody in this entire world except you. Nobody, nobody else was in that house that day, except you. You were the only one, you and him, alone. I didn't even go to Mesa. Can you check, can you check the GPS in the car? Yes, we will check that. If it's, you know, and if that comes back and... And I've looked at the map and the way that you're saying that you travel, there is no Listen, way. When the last road trip Travis and I went on, we drove to Utah. One, I mean, I'm sorry, we drove to Oklahoma City um, from Mesa. And one of our stops on the way was Roswell. After Ro He drove all night and I slept. And then when after Roswell Museum, it was my turn to drive. And he's like, just get on this and drive 98 point something miles and then we should be there. So I got on the road and I drove 98.6 or two or whatever miles it was. And I woke him up and I said, I don't think we're here. And, I, and he woke up and looked around and it was just like rolling fields forever. And I drove completely in the wrong direction. And I'm not saying, 
I don't know. I'm just saying I have a poor sense of direction. I got totally lost. I know maybe that's just bad luck. I got totally lost. No, even if you got totally lost, it doesn't explain all that time. It does not. I mean, if you went four hours here, five hours in the wrong direction, it's still Well, at that one that point, time. I wasn't going anywhere because I ran out of gas. I was totally stranded. I was sitting like a sitting duck, and that's when I began. It was it was a little bit warm, and it wasn't too hot, but um, that's when I just, I read for a little bit. I already slept, um, and that's when I just started looking around the car and organizing stuff and getting trash together and had a couple bites to eat from snacks that I had, and when I was cleaning out under the seat, I found my phone charger, plugged it in, powered it on. There was no cell phone reception anywhere. So you've never seen his camera? His new camera? I don't know. He described it. Did you ever touch his camera? I've never seen it. Okay, so there's no reason your fingerprint should be on it. Mm -hmm. Okay. Because that thing's off at a lab right now. And they're hopeful that they can get some prints off the camera. Okay. And if your prints come back on that camera, what are you going to say? Well, they won't come back on it because I've never touched it. You still can't explain the rest of this stuff. I honestly can't explain the pictures. The other stuff, and or the palm print, the other stuff I can explain. No, you can't explain the blood either. Because that blood is in blood. I mean, it's it's part of the print. Unless you cut yourself at the beginning of the year and left your palm print in blood, and it stayed there until he was killed. I cut myself. It wasn't the beginning of the year, it was before convention. No, you can't explain it. I'd, I'd have to say early March. That palm print is there. In blood. Partially yours and partially his. Is, is it possible that there's just like any other way in the universe that that could have gotten there? Possible. Probable is the question you need to ask. Probable is absolutely not probable. I understand that, but it is possible. Anything is possible. That is very compelling. Mm -hmm. That's why I'm here. That's why I travel here. Because I came here to arrest you. And get an explanation from you. That's the second reason. And since you're not giving me an explanation, I guess we'll just continue with the... With the uh, I just have no reason. reason to hurt Travis. You do have a reason to hurt Travis. What would my reason possibly be? There is a whole history of you two. But and everybody knows it. I have a whole history with other guys Why that Why is everybody saying that you had something to do with his death? Why is everybody saying that you are capable of hurting him? Everybody says it. I don't know why anyone... So don't tell me that you're not capable. I don't even hurt spiders. Have you ever had any anger issues before? Never in your past? I've, I've had arguments. I, we're trying to say well, anger. everybody has arguments. I'm talking about anger. Just mm -hmm. absolute anger. You just, you lose it sometimes. No, I had a nervous breakdown once. Have you taken any medication or anything? Mm -hmm. Nothing. Well, I had a nervous breakdown when the uh, boyfriend and I were arguing once, and um, and he he began to argue with me in a way that was totally different from how we, we had ever argued before. And he was just like, every time I'd say something, he was like, blah, 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 you know, mm -hmm. it was kind of weird. Like every time I tried to formulate a thought, and I was just sad and I was crying. Every time I tried to formulate a thought, he would interject and, and twist it, and it was like the weirdest psychological thing that had ever happened and and the way I reacted was I, I went into my room it was the guy I bought a house with um, I went into my room and shut the door we had separate bedrooms and I was in, in his room and went down the hall into my room and shut the door and I just remember hyperventilating and that's all and I was crying and then um, I went to get something out of my car and when he saw that he um, if he thought I was going to leave, so he asked me for the key to his truck and pulled behind my car because he thought that because I was so upset I shouldn't drive anywhere. But I mean, that's 
Other than arguments, no anger issues. once I was a freshman in high school and I love 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 animals and one we had this dog his name was doggy boy and my parents until this dog that they have now have never been able to and I don't mean just them we as a family have never been able to care for a dog properly as far as give it attention and take it for walks and be consistent um, so this dog stayed in the backyard a lot, and he stayed tied up on, you know, in the shade with plenty of, you know, leeway. At one point, though, he was untied, and I took the trash out, and he, and this is when my little brother and sister were still in diapers, and he tore this, it was a diaper trash, and he tore diapers all over the yard. And of course, I had to clean it up, and when diapers get wet, and they're like this jelly, spongy, weird stuff, and I just, I got mad and I I just kicked him with my right foot and he just moved a few feet and he didn't yelp or anything, but he just went, he ran away and I never saw him again after that. And I mean, that's probably an anger issue, I guess. But well, one time kicking a dog is an anger issue. It changed my world as far as animal treatment goes because I just, I've never seen him since. And I need to apologize for that to him. I know it sounds weird in my relationship with animals. It's kind of like they're like people too. You know, they have souls. What you need to do is you need to apologize to Travis. But you just refuse. Listen. You know, I can't help you anymore if you're not going if you're not gonna help yourself. You asked me. I really prior. can't. I can't, Jody. You can keep talking to you blue in the face.